And it's sort of like this extreme makeover workday where anyone from any faith, but it's led primarily by the Jewish and Muslim communities, come out and they, they make over a house for an elderly, low-income resident in, in Austin. Usually it's a widow or an older woman who's living on just a few hundred dollars a month. And, you know, she's going to break her hip if she falls down her stairs. Or, you know, I mean, these houses are in terrible condition. And uh, so we went out there. I, I agreed, of course. And I went out there. And they had invited pretty much anyone who wanted to come. It was a very organizing process. You know, spread the word, bring whoever. So there was a mixture of Orthodox, Reformed, conservative Jews. There were Sunni, Shia, Sufis. There were people of all ages. You know, whatever. Anyone who felt the call showed up. And that was the first time I left an interfaith experience feeling like I had done something positive as a Muslim in my community. I felt like I had made an effective contribution. Um, and ironically, we didn't really talk about religion. At the end of the day, we were covered in paint and sweat, and you know, we were basically just working all day. Uh, we took a break at lunchtime. Um, we had a blessing, a very simple blessing, by the Jewish leadership and the Muslim leadership. Um, the resident whose house we were fixing, she came out and she was moved to tears, having been a recipient of this goodwill. And we, uh, you know, after that, we maintained relationships with one another, which I can't honestly say I have done in any other interfaith interaction. And to this day, I go to these Jewish friends' houses for, uh, you know, for, for holidays, and we, they call me, they refer to press to me if you know, something happens. We have more than just a, a tolerance. We have friendships built on that kind of service together. 